Hello, my name's Colin Curtin and I'm the developer of Qualcoder. I'm going to be using the Qualcoder XE on Windows 10. I've also downloaded the examples folder from GitHub as well. So we'll start the program. Okay, and I'll probably just minimize that window. We've got several tabs and actual logs showing various things such as the release, the settings that are stored in Qualcoder and a project summary. But what I'm going to do is close this project and start a new project to show you how to load files and do other bits and pieces. So we've got create new project, test two. Test two is a folder with a .qda um, suffix, and it simply contains a whole pile of information to do with the um, the project. So we have a QDA database file and then folders for other documents. So while we're here, I'll just, so once we've created the project, it'll show some details down the bottom where it's stored, um, the version of SQLite used, what the date it was created and so on, the current code or name, which is called default. So if we go to project, we can create a new memo for the project. So this is a test of Qualcoder. Uh, and we'll also have a look at settings. You can change a project name. Maybe I'll change it to Colin. Um, so that's then enacted and it'll show down in the output here, code name changed to Colin. And um, we'll have options, oh, no other options there. We've got uh, various language options, so there's English is the primary language which I'm best at. German is my second best language. Some of the other translations here are probably not going to be that great. Uh, so assistance with translations would be great. There are options for fonts and sizes in different parts of the program. So I've got Calibri size 12, show IDs. This is used for showing some database auto numbers in different parts of the program. Uh, there's a dark mode, which instead of having this light gray and white look, it's reversed on a black look with white text. There's a time format for audio and video um, transcriptions. And there are a couple of speaker name formats for audio and video transcriptions. A couple of backup options. Generally, we like to keep back up the folder every time a project is opened, and it'll keep five recent backups. Backups are generated automatically once an hour. You can change the default project directory. In case there's a few other options here. Uh, we can obviously close a project, we can open recent projects. We can project summary displays general information about the project, including what files are stored, cases, codes, attributes, which are variables and journals. Currently there's nothing there. We can import a survey from an Excel or CSV file. We can import a codebook in the RFI QDA codebook format, and that appears to work quite well. We can import a project, and this is uh, work in development. It generally imports most things well, but it's not fully tested. So particularly aspects around audio video, and although I've improved importation of project file and case attributes and variables, they still might be, it still may be a little glitchy. Um, we can also import a project file from the RQDA project format. Similarly, we can export a code book or a full project into the REFI QDA uh, standard. These uh, again, the code book's probably okay, but the project export, again, may be slightly glitchy. It might not be perfectly tested because it's a bit hard to test all the options and functionality for this. So don't fully rely on this option. There's also an option to export the code book as a plain text file. Options are to view a file, import a file, create a text file from scratch, export a file, link, to a project, to a file that's outside the project folder. 
we can import a linked file into the project folder and we can export a file outside from the project file to an external location. We can add an attribute, which is a variable to a file to help sort of describe different file types. Uh, we can export all the uh, variables or attributes into a CSV file format. We can delete multiple files. And there's a help page in which this links to the uh, GitHub wiki for the man manage files uh, page. So we'll just load in a new file, click on import file, we'll use our examples. Um, I might select, select two, ID one and ID two. These are interview, brief interview transcript examples. And we'll just widen these a bit so we can see it a bit better. So when they're imported, the date and time of the import is listed. Um, and the full file name is described. For now, I'm not um, allowing edits to file names on import. I just think that the full file name sort of gives you sort of transparency to go back to the original source of information. So we double click, we can look at the file that's listed. Uh, we can edit these files. So there is some more. I can spell correctly. Here's some more text. You can edit as much as you like, but if you've already coded or annotated or assigned to a case sections of text, you have to be careful when editing. Ideally, you'd want to edit in places where you haven't done any coding or annotations. The main thing that you shouldn't do is if you have a section that's coded or annotated, don't select a whole section of text and delete or copy and paste over it. You're better off to select one character position and, and make edits there. We can add memos, transcript one. Um, so that's a memo. Highlighting the name gives you some details about how many characters in the file. This indicates it's a text file. And while we're at it, we'll load up another file type. Oops. Uh, I've got this image from Unsplash. Let's make it a bit wider. Or if you want narrow, it's up to you. Uh, so this is an image of someone lecturing to a class of students. And within this, you can move the image around using the scroll bars and you can resize the image. You can add a memo. And the memo's there. It'll give you some details of the image just hovering over the name. Add a uh, attribute, which is a, a variable that describes your files. There's two types, a character attribute or a numeric attribute. Source of info. Make it a character. Source of info that we'll call this interview. Um, we can also have files assigned to cases, which I'll show a bit later on. We can manage attributes. So we've created one called source of info assigned to our files. We can assign an attribute to a case and this type is a character and we can add a memo to the attribute. We can also delete attributes as well. So we've got options here. We can create a journal, export a journal, export all journals as a single text file, delete a journal. And we've got some search text options here, which I'll show in a moment. And here there's a link to the GitHub wiki page for journals. So we'll create a journal, our first journal, great name. This is the first journal entry for this example. So what we can do here with this search text, um, search text also uses regex, which I won't go into detail now, but if you search for a word, for example, the, and this isn't tick, so we're only gonna search in the selected journal, which will find the word the. If we tick this, it will search through all the journals for a particular word as you go along. Manage cases, so, 
cases are a way of helping you to group files or parts of files, particularly parts of text files, together into a, um, a case about a particular topic, maybe a person. So we can create a case, can add attributes, can import cases from files. Uh, we have a manager which helps assign files to a case. We can export the uh, variables to a file and we can delete cases. There's also a link to a help function, uh, which is the GitHub wiki page. So let's create a case and I call it case 99. I'll call it case 99. So this is created here. We can add a memo, a test case. There's nothing assigned to the case. If I click here, something will show up here if it's assigned. So we can use our case file manager and we can actually link some of these files to the case. So we can link the image file to the case. So you want to right click on the file, add file to case. So then when we go to here and we click on the case, we've got a link that if we open it, right click and open, we can view that linked file. So again, with this uh, case, we can add, say, this text file, right click, add file to case. So now when we click on here, we've got the text file displayed, some details about it, and all of this text file is assigned to the case. Uh, we can also import cases. So I'll go to the examples folder. In fact, before I do anything else here, we'll have a look at the examples folder. We've got a cases Excel file. And it's listed in a particular way. The first row has to contain the variables of interest. So we've got age, gender, and interest as a variable. We've got case. And the first column has a unique identifier for each case that we're going to add. So I'll just go back to the program and we'll load that Excel cases uh, Excel sheet. So now we've got ID4 has been loaded, ID5, ID6, and the variables associated with those cases have been imported as well. Uh, the other version I've got is a CSV file, so a comma separated values. It's the same circumstance. The first row contains the variables of interest, the names. The first column must have the unique identifiers of each of the case, so one, two, three. Import from examples, CSV file, open. And one, two, three have been loaded as well. So ID1, if we manage our files, the ID1 transcript would be well assigned to ID1. So add file to case, we shall do that. Similarly with ID2, we'll add that file to the case. Okay, and you can see that there's one file described for each case there. And the ones that we just added here, we'll just edit that. We'll unassign that. Okay, so ID2, we've got this. ID1, we've got this. To files, when you get a lot of files, there's a way, there's ways of sorting and ordering files. So if you right click, you can view alphabetically or by date order, file type order, or case order. And if you click on one of the variables, for example, the source of info variable that we created, you can again order by attributes, order by this attribute, or only show this value. So by only show those that are interviewed, that's all that's displayed here. To exit that, you can just show all rows, right click and show all rows. So that's the start of how to manipulate files in the program.